Hello and welcome to video lecture in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 5, Change in Development in Industrial Society from your textbook, Social Change in Development in India. As you know that this chapter is divided into four parts. So far we have discussed about nature and features of industrial societies, emergence of industrial society after industrial revolution in Europe, concept of economic growth in development, about basic sectors of economy and gender segregation in workforce. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion about nature of industrialization in India after independence. Economists and social scientists often make a distinction between types of sector and economy. We have already discussed about differences between primary, secondary and tertiary sector. Apart from these basic sectors of economy, we can also differentiate between public and private sector and also organized or formal and unorganized or informal sector. Let us look at the differences between each of these sectors of economy one by one. Let us begin our discussion with private sector. Private sector includes businesses being done by people. The primary objective of a private enterprise is to make profit. The management of a private enterprise has to take a lot of interest and make lot of effort to ensure success of their business or enterprise. Private businesses have to compete with one another in order to survive. They have to adapt to the changing market conditions to keep their customers intact. With profit maximization being the primary goal, it may adopt any means to achieve that objective. With profit maximization as their interest, private sector enterprises may even resort to unethical or unfair practices such as black marketing, hoarding, adulteration, etc. to make huge profits. The private sector mainly provides consumer goods to the people. But since liberalization of Indian economy, gradually they are entering or have entered into diverse fields like telecommunication, airlines and energy sector. You are familiar with many big companies which are now entering into these sectors. On the contrary, public sector is for the public good. The promotion of public welfare is the most important objective of a public enterprise. The prices charged by these enterprises may be at par or at times even below the cost of production that the company incurs. The success of a public enterprise is judged on the basis of economy and the quality of products that they deliver. Rules and regulation in the matter of appointment, promotion, dismissal, etc. are fixed in public enterprises. The management of a public enterprise is usually impersonal. The people in charge of the management of public enterprise have less stake in the enterprise because they enjoy a great deal of job security irrespective of the performance of the enterprise as compared to private sector where the enterprise owner has to work very hard in order to survive the harsh competition. The public sector provides basic facilities like education, health, transportation etc. Some of the examples are telecommunication, Indian railways or bus or transport services, post and telegraph etc. Another important distinction is made between organized and unorganized sector of the economy. The organized sector is registered and regulated by the government. The terms of employment for the workers in this sector are mostly regular. Organized sector is governed by various laws such as Factories Act, Minimum Wages Act, Provident Fund and Social Security etc. On the contrary, the unorganized sector is not registered by the government. The terms of employment of the workers here are not regular. An unorganized sector is largely unregulated. The main advantages of working in organized sectors are many. Let us discuss some of these advantages. In an organized sector, workers enjoy job security and related benefits to some extent. Here, the working hours are fixed and if a worker works more, the employer has to pay over time as per the rules applicable. The workers in the organized sector are entitled to several other benefits like leave, encashment of leave, paid leave, provident fund, gratuity and pension benefits. The workers also get medical benefits and as per the law, the management of enterprise has to ensure provision of basic minimum facilities like safe and hygienic working conditions and minimum wages. Workers working in unorganized sectors are a disadvantage as compared to the workers in the organized sector. 
as unorganized sector is not regulated and workers usually get exploited. Their employment is subject to a high degree of insecurity and workers can be fired at any point of time without citing any particular reason. In unorganized sector, there is hardly any provision of overtime, paid leave, structured holidays or sickness leave, etc. Large number of vendors, hawkers or people doing small jobs such as construction worker or repair workers are part of unorganized sector. And there is no guarantee that they'll get regular work or earn on a daily basis. In unorganized sector, there must be regulation of minimum wages, safety and health standards and the workers in the unorganized sector should be given protection because a large percentage of population is working in unorganized sector. The wages of such workers are very low or these jobs are usually low paid. These people remain in vicious circle of poverty. The workers are mostly treated as bonded labor. At times they have to work more than 12 hours and they are not even paid minimum wages what to talk about the overtime. They are not even given basic entitlement or any other such benefit. There is no job security for the workers and they are mostly dependent upon the mercy of their employers. Being dependent upon the employer and caught in the debt, these people are forced to accept lower wages and whatever conditions are being offered to them to work. Since they are generally engaged in hazardous industries like mining, brick or cracker industries etc, they need basic protection and safe working conditions. Moreover, belonging to poor sections of society, even their health standards are not very good. Talking about the nature of practices in different sectors, we find that major percentage of workforce in India works in small scale enterprises. In small scale enterprises, personal relationships determine many aspects of your work and the success of work as well. This is different from a large organization with well defined rules, where recruitment is more transparent and there are proper and formal mechanisms for complaint and their redressal. Secondly, very few Indians have secure jobs with benefits. Of those who do have, two thirds of them work in the government sector. Government jobs are very popular in India. You must have heard people vying for government jobs. Why are these jobs so popular? They are popular because one, they offer pension benefits. Pension benefit is a major old age security concern for the people. Otherwise, in the old age, they have to become dependent upon their children later in their life. Sociologically analyzing, employment and government sector has also played a major role in overcoming cultural divisions of caste, religion, region and language in India. It has led to mixing of different cultures in Indian society. You know India is multicultural in nature. Look at the defense services. If you happen to be born in a defense family, you know that you have traveled all over India, in different parts of India. You have tasted every culture in different degrees and dosages. Moreover, since very few people are members of unions, which is a feature of organized sector, they do not have the experience of collective bargain for proper wages and safe working conditions. As such, the government has few laws to monitor conditions in the unorganized sector. And even if there are some laws in place, in practice they are manipulated by the employer or the contractor, and hence the workers suffer badly. Let us look at the nature of industrialization in years immediately after independence. After independence, the government sought for planned development, focusing upon both the agrarian reform and industrialization. A large percentage of population during independence and after independence was living in pathetic condition. The government after independence placed priority on economic growth with social justice. A mixed economy model with a major role for the state in industrial production was adopted with an emphasis on import substitution strategy. This mixed policy helped in India to lay the foundation for industrialization and technological change. Along with the development of industry, there was also emphasis upon reform of agriculture as discussed which was initiated by introduction of green revolution. After independence, the visionaries of modern India saw industrialization of economy as the path towards achieving growth and social equality. Development of heavy and machine making industries, expansion of public sector and holding of large cooperative sector were considered important for developing Indian economy. Modern and prosperous India as visualized by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first prime minister of independent India was to be built upon the edifice of giant steel plants, big dams, canals and power stations. These were called as temples of modern India by Pandit Nehru. 
The first modern industries in India were cotton industry, jute, coal mines and railways. After independence, the government took over the important sectors of the economy. These sectors were the defence, transport, power, communication, telecommunication, mining and other projects which were under the control of the state. The strength of the public sector was supposed to be the backbone of the development of Indian economy. In fact, the public sector contributed in many ways to the development of Indian economy. The main reasons are that rapid industrialization of India after independence was dependent upon the presence of and creation of basic infrastructure that would facilitate further industrialization such as power projects, irrigation, transportation, communication, education and skill development, technical training, etc. It was considered that these basic facilities could provide necessary support for rapid growth and development of industry which would further fuel development of economy. Most of the public sector enterprises were set up in these industries. The growth of the public sector in the field of iron and steel, petroleum, natural gas, coal, heavy engineering, electrical and machinery etc. created a strong industrial base which was essential for giving a boost to industrialization. Through industrialization, the government also attempted to reduce and overcome regional disparities. To overcome regional disparities, the government had set up industries in less developed or underdeveloped regions in India, thus aiming for overall development. You must be knowing that before independence, industries were located mainly in the port cities like Madras, Bombay and Calcutta. But since then, we see the places like Baroda, Coimbatore, Bangalore, Pune, Faridabad, Rajkot have become important industrial towns and centres. The government also tried to encourage small-scale sector industry through special incentives and assistance. Many items like paper and wood products, stationery, handicraft items, glass and ceramics were reserved for the small-scale sector. In 1991, large-scale industry employed only 28% of the total workforce engaged in the manufacturing, while the small-scale sector or traditional industry employed 72% of people. Since 1990s, the government has followed a policy of liberalisation. It is popularly called as LPG, the policy of liberalisation, privatisation and globalisation. Although different social sciences define these concepts in different fashion, let us look at their definition as used by economics. Liberalisation refers to relaxation of restrictions imposed by the government in economic policies, such as removing the restrictions on import, reducing the tariffs and duties and opening up of the trade for foreign investors. Thus, liberalisation is opening up of economy to international market. Associated with concept of liberalisation is the concept of privatisation. Privatisation means opening up of those sectors of economy or areas for private ownership which had so far been closed and were strictly controlled by the government. And the third concept is concept of globalisation. Globalization is defined as the growing magnitude, expanding scale, speeding up and deepening impact of transcontinental flows and patterns of social interaction. The government is increasingly trying to sell its share in several public sector companies now. This process is known as disinvestment. Disinvestment means selling of public sector units equity to private players or in the open market. It is in a way opening up of economy just like privatization and liberalization or you can say disinvestment is a consequence of privatization and liberalization. These processes together have altered the nature of Indian economy radically particularly in the last two decades. With these policy changes since last couple of decades private companies especially foreign firms have started to invest in sectors that were earlier under the control of government including telecom, civil aviation, power and irrigation. Many Indian companies have been bought over by multinationals and at the same time few Indian companies are becoming global or multinational companies. To conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this lecture. We started our discussion by understanding different sectors of economy, namely organized and unorganized sector, private and public sector. We also compared advantages and disadvantages of these sectors. Then we discussed about the nature of industrialization after independence and particularly the policy of LPG meaning liberalization, privatization and globalization in the last two decades. 
In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss issues pertaining to jobs or finding employment. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you. Thank you.